Good morning and welcome to our thought for the day. Um, as we continue um, in the passage in Ephesians 6, uh, verse 17, where we discuss the armour of God, and today we're going to be focusing on the helmet of salvation. So as we see in this passage, Paul calls the Christian's headgear the helmet of salvation. An image, like the breastplate of righteousness, um, is borrowed directly from the description of the divine warrior in Isaiah 59. In fact, God's righteousness and his people occur together frequently in the book of Isaiah. They have a cause-effect relationship and God's reliable um, commitment to fulfill all his promises to his people means that he must act to deliver them from all their enemies. This includes not merely their physical enemies, such as the Assyrians and Babylonians, but the greatest enemy of all, their sin, and the separation from God that this causes. God's people um, could be uh, encouraged by the confident hope that God promises would not fail. People come and go, empires rise and fall, and even the earth and the heavens will one day wear out like an old garment. But because the Lord is righteous, he must fulfill everything that he has promised, including, including the deliverance and restoration of his people. This firm promise of God provides the basis for their secure hope in the midst of life's trials and difficulties, that God will save and deliver his people in the end. This is why in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8, Paul describes this piece of armour more fully as the hope of salvation. The Christian's helmet is his or hers sure hope of salvation. Sometimes in the world we see this um, when they say hope, it's I hope to do well or I hope to achieve this. And hope in the world is very fleeting, but biblical hope gives us a sure grounding in Christ. Now sometimes when we think of this, um, it's sometimes most evident when you ask people the hard questions about life. If they do or don't believe in hell, but if you were to ask them, nobody wants to go to hell. And not many people actually think they will. But this is not what Paul means by the hope of salvation. In terms of battle headgear, that kind of hoping to be saved is as much as a floppy sun hat. So it's very flimsy. Um, it may feel comfortable, um, but when it's time for conflict, when it's time for battle, um, it's not going to help you in any sort of way. So sometimes if you were to ask people if they were to die tonight and God were to ask you, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say? Um, that's a great question because it really does jolt the heart. Um, for many people, they think it's about you know, doing the Ten Commandments, you know, loving people as yourself, or you know, even myself. Sometimes I, I, I know that I am worse than many people. Um, and even when even with those answers, those answers still provide absolute. Um, they they're quite floppy, flip floppy answers, and they can sometimes change from day to day, and they are very uncertain. But the Bible tells us um, that we, there's one way that we can be sure that we are going to heaven. Um, and that's not trusting on our own works. Um, it's trusting, obviously, in the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Apostle John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So that's First John 5 verse 13. John wants us to be sure um, that we are going to heaven. He could have you. He could have... How could he have known um, for such a sure thing? Um, certainly that we can fit dependent on our own goodness. And our own goodness isn't, um, isn't good enough. And we hear that in the book of Romans where you know, it talks about our works being as filthy rags. And also Ephesians 2 actually says that we shouldn't boast in our own works, but we should boast in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, again, is the hope of our salvation, is knowing that Christ's work is absolutely good enough and sure enough to take us to heaven and to be and dwell with him. So I think it's important for us to know, to have that on our heads, that Christ did come into the world. As we read in, in 1 Corinthians 15, that you know, if, if, if Christ hasn't risen from the dead, then our salvation is completely futile. But we know he did, and you know he's coming back again. So let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the helmet of salvation, which gives us an absolute assurance that we will see and be in heaven because of the Son of God, whose righteousness is our own. And we can stand sure that you have fulfilled 
all your promises in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we can hold dearly to his name and a belief in him. We thank you in Jesus' name.